I've just now got an email from Void Interactive asking me to check out the de developer blog three that they um, that they literally just uh, emailed me just now asking me, hey man, check this out, you know, news update for the developer blog, and I was like, okay, I'll check it out. So here we are right now. They got a new screenshot. So let's just get right into it. Okay. Ready or not is alive and well. We've been very busy here at Void Interactive, and plans haven't changed. In fact, they've been expanded upon. Now let's get to the good stuff. Yes, let's. The scenes are in-game and real-time, using the assets you'll be playing with when the game is released. Alright, nice. We got uh, some new screenshots, but uh, it says that it's, it's within game, but it's just... I'm kind of more into seeing some actual gameplay footages because uh, I'm really skeptical about it. I don't doubt you guys from Void Interactive. It's just that I'm cautious because after I'm cautious because um I supported a game called Takedown Red Saber. I have a bumper st a sticker on my car that says Takedown Red Saber, and when that game came out, it was just a huge disappointment. Mainly because the developers from Sorellin, who's made by uh, Chris and Allen, it's not his fault entirely. It's just some shitty luck from development that he went through, and um, you know, I wish I do wish him and everybody else the best. But um, they they tried. It's just that it was just a it was just a it the whole thing just went food bar. Anyways, where have our updates been? Okay, well. While the whole crew here are looking forward to showing you all the content our game has to offer, showcasing this works takes a lot of time. It can prove difficult to put development on hold and focus on a devlog due to the size and specialty of our team. However, despite the size, this year is looking very excited. If you're interested and ready or not. You know, I do I kind of see that because it's like, what do you guys want? Um... Do you, do you want us to to make uh, to talk to you guys a lot more and work less on the game or do you guys want us to go full circle on on the game and I and if you ask me I want you guys to work on the game around the clock just take as long as long as you need to and you know do do whatever you need to do because I can wait and I know that you guys have been very busy because you have not said anything to us. It's almost like you guys were kind of like virtually non-existent. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You guys have been answering questions, which is good. It's good. So I, I'm, I'm not saying that you guys are, are at fault here. Um, I just wish there was more updates. But, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll trust you guys. You know, hopefully... Um, Hopefully, once you get to the point where you are able to talk more, you can be more elaborate with what you're going to do with this game. I'm looking forward to uh, to hopefully um, discussing with you guys more more about ready or not, because uh, I'm going to have to start writing down some questions that I like to to ask you guys, which is pretty much going to be same as the FAQs that you guys are probably preparing. Anyways. Here they're going to be talking about the AI artificial intelligence. So for the last year, we've been writing suspect and SWAT AI that will challenge the player and act realistically. Our suspect AI can be surprisingly spontaneous and very lethal. For example, failure to restrain a suspect may result in them getting up when the SWAT are no longer around and finding something to defend themselves with. Players will have to be strategic, mindful of their surroundings, and use the tools provided to ensure rooms are safe before and during entry. Mind, body, technique. I like it. For single player, players will be placed on the shoes of the SWAT team leader with four officers under your command. Sounds familiar to SWAT 4, doesn't it? The SWAT, the, I mean, the AI for our SWAT needed to be both robust and independent. Also, let me uh, share a disclaimer with you guys. I have not pre-read this at all. This is all new new to me. They li literally just emailed me just now in the middle of the night. And it's like 12.58 in the morning for me. So I'm... 
I'm not wasting time here. I'm checking this out. Okay, where were we? Um, the AI for our SWAT needed to be both robust and independent in the sense that they will act in a manner that conveys a high level of tactical training while also being able to act dynamically if needed. This means realistic entry techniques, holding smart angles when waiting for commands, and so on. SWAT will drop chem lights in cleared rooms, make arrests, and collect evidence in their vicinity upon command if the area is clear. It kind of sounds like to me that, that these guys have played SWAT 4 with the Elite 4 SWAT. It just sounds like it. I mean, it just it sounds very, very familiar. Maybe they collaborated with those guys before. I don't know. But, um... The SWAT 4 AIs in Vanilla are dumb as shit. They will literally find a suspect, and if the suspect or civilian is fleeing, that one of the SWAT AIs, when I'm playing a single player, they will suicide engage as in, like, they'll run off, abandon their, their team, go into a room by themselves. I don't want them doing that. I want them to hold tight, stay in formation, stay with me, and do not... Do not break formation. Do not leave your team behind. If we're going to get these guys, we're going to get them together. That that was the problem with SWAT 4. I and I hope uh I hope things are are different in this game. But uh it seems like they have a video here so I'm going to be doing a reaction to this to this video. Along with some other videos too. Holy shit. All right. In the below footage, the suspect falls and rolls behind the vending machine to take cover as I am transitioning from my sidearm to my rifle. One of the officers engages the suspect before he has a chance to shoot at me. There are a couple of other features you can see in this. Ricochet, shell casing, hitting the screen that were entirely random and not planned. Alright. Let me put on my headphones and we'll watch this video real quick. I'll give you guys a, a live reaction from me. Okay, so he just successfully shoots him, but he gets back up and he gets out. He's like, okay. And then it, it also gives you a notification that he's killed. All right, so that's some seven seconds of... Uh, seven seconds of gameplay right there but uh there's more so don't so don't uh don't click away just yet there's more gameplay than this um there's no audio at all so that's kind of strange all right as is st as is standard with any police tactical shooter the police the players team can also employ breaching methods such as c2 charges or door or door ramps as well as deploy grenades into a room to clear it before entry. SWAT will also start off in a stealth mode, where the ROE is shifted to force them to call contacts to the team leader before engagement. The officers keep their voices low in this state to ensure they're not heard. They'll also be less likely to initiate combat unless put in danger. During combat, the team will shift to dynamic mode where the team will become more likely to engage targets if seen. This mode can also be employed immediately at the element leader's command. A new feature we've added to Ready or Not is the inclusion of go codes. Players can separate their element into blue and red. Order them to take different entry points on a room or rooms, and then initiate the breach as the element, known as gold. The breach can be initiated on a single group as well, allowing the remainder of the units to cover a different location, such as a hallway or exit. And here's another video. Okay, same room, same guy that's down. You got actually see some SWAT officers clearing out each corner. You got this guy clearing a corner. You got these guys also taking cover. Okay, that's cool. Um... It's kind of strange. There's no audio. I had to check a, l a little bit to find out if it was just me. But no, it's just uh, there's no audio. So um, it's not a big deal. I just uh, I just thought it was me for a moment. Which um, they did say they were going to have some voice acting. So maybe as far as like the oh shit, that guy's head is all kinds of fucked up. God damn. 
like splattered his his head apart in point in point blank range. God damn. Damn, I'm gonna have to put a warning label on here about graphic images. Holy shit. Okay, naturally we also have okay. <laughs> naturally we also have a civilian AI system will act unpredictable during gunfights. Some will panic when shots are when shots ring out. If they find a clear exit, the civilians may try to run away from the combat to avoid being killed. It's best to get a control of the civilians as soon as possible, by any means. Our AI systems also take cover based on object height and strength, and will attempt to confuse the player by peeking out and then readjusting to find a better uh, a better fighting position, if possible. Motion capture we've invested in high-end optical motion cam capture cameras used on titles such as Star Citizen, Metal Gear Solid 5, Fantastic, ATC. Our animator has been hard at work setting up all of the necessary tools to record and process the vast amount of animations we require for Ready or Not. So far, the results have proven to be incredible, with a high frame rate output and minimal cleanup. The plan will be to use these tools to their maximum ability, meaning we're planning on also recording facial motion capture and recording some truly long and truly gruesome animations. Below we've posted an example of the motion capture that we recorded on day one. It's short, but we'll give you an idea of what to expect. Let's check it out. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very clean. I like that. It's very realistic, very clean, and it's something that you would actually see. Hold on, let me look at that again. I like that. That's that's actually very realistic. I don't do roomy entries. I usually just go on the uh the the, the YouTube and stuff and I look up like room entry tactics and techniques so that I know what to do when entering a room in order to kind of help me out to play CQB games like SWAT 4 and the older Rainbow Six games and other games that allows me to do uh, uh, room entry style stuff. But uh, seeing this, this is pretty neat. But I kind of wonder, are the, uh, the animations dynamic? Let me... Uh, Okay. Our our animations have been improved. Have been improved. Hold on. Let me watch that video again. Now, when he clears the corner on the left, if there's somebody standing there in the corner, will he actively shoot, or does he gotta wait until the animation's finished? Because uh, that could also be problematic. You want these guys like as soon as the day goes through the door frame. They got to engage targets as soon as possible, even even if the door is, is open or not. Actually, I don't know. I I would got to see actual like gameplay to see how this stuff is dynamic, and I would actually have to get my hands on it to find out. Anyways, animations. Our animations have been improved drastically. The team is aiming to make the game world feel more and more. A reel with a variety of new artistic features on the first person front. Every animation is created at 240 FPS, and the weapon models have been rigged so that they loosely shake and jolt in the appropriate locations during gunfire. This is inspired heavily by killing Floor 2 in their first person animations. We've also introduced some procedural animations into our workflow. For example, our animations are layered with a random are layered with a randomized node based system which creates a very realistic and very unpredictable method of shake when an officer fires rapidly. These can be adjusted based on the weapon, its weight, and what attachments have been placed on it, as well as officer condition. Third person animations have received similar treatment. 
with a series of hit reactions being added to SWAT, suspect and civilian alike. This is based entirely upon where the subject is shot. This also includes death animations, which are currently work in progress. Check it out. Bam, he's dead. Okay, so he just falls on the floor like a sack of potatoes. This guy... Uh, okay, he grabs his right shoulder. This guy here grabs his right shoulder. Going like, ah, oh, shit, I've been shot, I've been shot. Oh, claw, fuck. And he just goes down on the ground. So if we watch that again... Get this stupid thing off. He, When he gets shot... The first hit... Hold on, let me zoom in on this. When he gets shot, the first bullet actually hits right on his left arm, or his right shoulder, and he grabs to it. And then he gets shot again, and then he, he gets shot again in the neck, and he's like, oh, my neck. And then he just gets blasted completely all over, and he's just like, oh, fuck. And then, I, then he just tumbles to the ground. So that's what they mean when they're talking about something like that. And for this guy, the very first guy, okay, he's got his hands up. He's been shot multiple times. He goes down. He goes down on his right knee. Okay, you see that? He goes when he gets shot. He immediately goes down on his right knee, and then he continues to just collapse on the ground, pretty much losing all, all strength of his body. So. He, uh, he just, he just collapsed. Also, I noticed this little thing here that says report dead suspect. So, I think that, that kind of confirms that you would have to, to do this, the same thing as you would in SWAT, where you gotta report a down a suspect or a DOA or, you know, a, a civilian that has been strained, a suspect that has been cuffed, anything among those lines. Which looks like it. And damn, this game actually looks pretty damn. Well, it's really bloody, I'll say that much. Anyways, uh, let's go on to the gameplay. Gameplay. The important the importance of expanding of our reload system became Let me just restart over. The importance of expanding of our reload system became clear to the combat in ready or not. Players can still swap megs by pressing the reload key, but now also have the ability to perform a quick reload by double tapping the same key. This will quickly eject the meg to the floor and allows players to quickly resume combat in the event they can't afford to waste time replacing magazines in their kit. This reload technique is a lot faster by about 35 to 60%. And the drop magazines can't be reclaimed once combat has e has ceased. On top of this, players can hold R to check their magazine capacity, as well as ammo type. The magazines will accurately show ammo quantity and type, as well as providing a prompt with the weight of the, of the magazine, whether it feels empty, feels light, feels full, etc. And here's a demonstration. Oh, that's nice. Tactical reload. And then you can switch between full auto. And there you go, you have full auto. So you can switch between which burst, a single burst, and then full auto. And you also got the tactical reload. Which is where you you basically just take another... This is the, this here is the tactical reload. That's That's what that's called. And that's nice too. Even the uh, the fire, sw uh, sw even the the fire switch changes too. You can see it there in the bottom. Here I'll show you. Down here in the bottom, you can see it kind of like toggle between full auto and semi automatic. That's really nice. See small de de details like that, especially on on the weapons, makes a big difference. Because if you're going to be staring at at them all the time in the screen, you might as well just pay a lot of attention on details and the, and the animations on that stuff as far as textures to make sure that they look good. 
because if it doesn't, I I am going to notice that and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb and it's just going to bother me throughout the whole game. So it's got to be picture perfect, I guess. And here's the 5.7 reload system, which is the pistol. It reloads a new mag. So pretty much from what I can see here. Oh. Ah, uh, such a cockfuck. Okay. So from what I could see there, there's going to be possibly a, ta a tactical reload option for all the guns, which is something that a lot of us have been wanting to have for every tactical shooter. I think at this point it should be mandatory. Okay, as such, we've done away with a lot of the UI shown in the development block too. Our philosophy is that less is more in the sense that the player should be told this information passively if possible, or know it intuitively in replacement of this ui we've added a compass at the top of the screen to assist with direction giving also we've also made adjustments to our speed system which now uses a tired system to go to certain speeds this means units will be provided with five paces to choose from with their scroll wheel while this may sound a little less interesting at first, it helps to coordinate speeds with your team. This still allows for a wide variety of movement options during combat. Which is, yeah, it, it does. Because if you have tried holding a rifle and walking forward, which I have before, and it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. You can't... It's, it's, it's really difficult to hold a rifle and keep that stabilized while moving forward step by step. I've tried it before and it's very difficult. Now try, uh, now imagining, just try running around as fast as you can in games like C uh, CS goes and all those arcade games where it's like, you can run and sprint throughout the whole house, which is something you don't do if you're, if you're a tactical team. And you stop and then you aim your gun and then you squeeze the trigger and then it's for some for some reason you you almost got like laser pinpoint accuracy which is not realistic at all and it's it's not realistic and as far as running in a close quarter combat environment you don't want to be running you don't want to be running unless there's a good reason to but you shouldn't be running from from place to place just to get the the quickest shots on a guy as you can in, in, in like a, uh, a twitch, uh, a twitch shooting contest. This isn't going to be that, that type of game. This is going to be like a slow paced tactical where it's like, you gotta, you gotta know where, where to aim the rifle and you gotta know where, where to shoot it pretty much. Um, but yeah, uh, try, trying to shoot and move is very d uh, difficult, even with a rifle. I should know because I got I got an AR-15, so so walking and shooting is very difficult. We're including four grenades and ready or not the flashbang, CS gas, sting ball, and the nine banger. These will all fill a very specific role in an officer's kit. So choosing the right object for the for the job will be crucial. Our grenades will be thrown in both in overhand and underhand method. That is. Good to hear, because I'm I, I get tired of having the option to throw it overhand. You throw it overhand in case you want to throw it along or out or over an object. If you're going to do a room clearing, it's got to be underhand, you know, because you're trying you're trying to throw it inside a room, not try to throw it as far as you, you can in the back of the room to where you're not blinding the guys that are next to the door that could possibly kill you in a split second. Anyways, uh. So some grenade effects can be mitigated by devices we provided. For example, the CS uh, gas can be negated with the selection of gas mass during loadout selection, naturally. Some of the, fla the flashbangs and stingers effects can be mitigated if the user has a ballistic shield equipped. This also acts to protect anyone behind the shield. 
The particles we use for the grenades can create a very dusty and smoky environment for them, similar to real life. They do, because they're using explosives. You gotta have, like, the explosive mist and re uh, residue floating around the room. Because it's using uh, actual explosives to detonate those things. There are a bunch of other neat f uh, features we like to show you, such as our sniper teams and their ballistics system, but some of them are quite heavily work in progress. So perhaps it's best if they wait for a Ready or Not gameplay trailer. So there's going to be a sniper team system with realis realistic ballistics. I wonder if like co-op there be an uh, I wonder if that means that since there's going to be co-op in multiplayer, players can decide to be a, a part of a sniper team, and they can and they have options to take up positions around the building and get uh, and probably the best angle shot that they can. I wonder if there's like like roof access and stuff across buildings from the target building that you're raiding. Or maybe like on top on top of the SWAT van or something like that that you can use for cover, while you're you're trying to look into the house and see what's there, or something like that. I wonder I wonder that, that would actually be kind of neat. And to hear that uh, snipers would have realistic ballistics sounds nice. I hope it has realistic ballistics, as in like all the scientific calculation that goes to firing a bullet from the outside inside going through the windows and hitting somebody but since they're planning on having modded modding support on this i'm pretty sure uh players and modders can probably extend on that regardless if it's there maybe what they're doing is that they're just probably putting a realistic ballistic system some that would make sense and some that would actually be realistic for a game to have ballistics for bullets. You may have noticed on our Instagram a bunch of new images showcasing our SWAT characters and suspect characters for multiplayer. With advice from real SWAT units, we've developed a new, much more optimized officer with all the gear you could expect modern SWAT to carry. Our PvP suspects have also been developed with a close attention to kit and wear. Loosely based off of images of massed IRA forces and our counter operator to the police is, is a part of a rogue paramilitary organization with sinister motives. Okay. The beginning of the year saw our investment into scanning equipment, allowing for the high quality capture of real world subjects for use in Ready or Not. These tools have widely been used by industry giants such as Naughty Dog when working on an Untarded 4. This equipment was immediately put to use making our new SWAT player models. This equipment eventually coincided with a trip overseas where we proceeded to scan a total of 128 men, women, children for use in the game. This means a wide variety of characters per level, more than we ever anticipated. You won't be seeing randomized heads on a small number of bodies, but a massive number of fully detailed and lovingly crafted individuals suited for each level's environment. We like to thank each and every one of the people who came down to get scanned by our team. It was a great experience for us, and we hope it was a great experience for you too. Well, that's cool. I wonder I wonder if we're going to have like some people that we can recognize some famous people that we may know that would be kind of interesting to see. Okay. Travel the core the core void team came together for 4 weeks in New Zealand to work on a game and bond. We get goals connected with some associates and overall had a good trip. One of the big aspects of our trip was playtesting, where we hosted a LAN and had a series of people jump on for some co-op and team deathmatch madness. The results we got from the testers was great. It's one in a, in a long list of trials we need to put the game through to get it to the standard we are going to reach. While they were numerously gameplay and design tweaks needed to hit the correct pace. We discovered Ready or Not runs very smoothly on a, on a variety of different setups. This is, in multiplayer aspect, to get good use out of your 144Hz monitor. Note that this may change, but so far it's so good. The levels are able to easily handle from 50 to 70 AI as well. 
which opens up a lot of possibilities for the for the title and anyone making levels in the future. Cool. Another huge aspect of our trip was finalizing our game story. We can't divulge any information yet, but we think you'll like it. That's it from Void from Void Team for now. We've got a busy time ahead of us, but we'll keep everybody up to date as best we can. Be sure to uh, to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram for the updates. Signing off, Void Interactive. And there's a little. Some of the four guys that has been blurred out from their images because, you know, they don't want to be, they want to keep it a secret. All right, so that is some big divulging. That is the, the Dead Block 3 going dynamic from Void Interactive. But that's it for now. That's a lot of stuff to kind of divulge. So I'll let you guys think about it for yourselves. Uh, make sure you leave in a comment about what you guys think about this this news update. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Notify so that you can stay um, up to date on probably some more news about Ready or Not. And to also get some more gameplay videos. I try to make some more gameplay videos. Um, usually once every week. But sometimes I get so busy with real life I just can't keep up with my own schedule um if you guys like this video make sure you, you leave a like and don't forget to give a shout out to void interactive on their facebook their twitter and their instagram which i'll leave a link in their descriptions all down below and if you're gonna talk to them make sure you mention me vast game master and that's it for now and i'll see you guys next time